What's up? Good morning, Ma. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. What so we today we're going to work on some, obviously, interval training because that's what we do at Recovery Run. But um, it's psycho physical fitness. So what we're working on mentally, intrapersonal and interpersonal development. Not trying to teach somebody else a lesson, but when you communicate, teach yourself a lesson. So that's what we're working on today. Along with all the high knee jumps and the 500 core exercises and the uphill. Whoa, 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 500, am I ready for this? Yeah, yeah, of course right. you are. <laughs> Welcome to the Paradox Review, Love Rules segment. Today we talk about body consciousness and the victory run with Ma'at Petrova. Also, love, sex, and naked yoga. Ma'at, what's up? Hi. <laughs> An amazing workout today. Um, victory. The victory run. Uh, you know what? The workout was great. What possessed you to even begin the victory run? Okay, so um, the victory run was inspired by a uh, life crisis that I was going through. And so I was with a friend. We said, you know what? Let's go for a run. And as we began to run, we said, let's do a sprint and when we do the sprint we're gonna sprint out our fears so we started sprinting and sprinting out our fears and then we was like all right now let's do the ugly run let's, <laughs> let's do an ugly run we just was having fun when we was like ah ugly <laughs> let's sprint it out and then um we were just doing using different incentives and characteristics and traits that we want to build within ourselves to run to and by the end of the run it became really intense she was ready to quit, and I was like, no, come on, let's go. I held her hand, and I just kept um, pulling her. I was like, come on, you, you could do it. She was like, oh, I can read. Then she started crying, and I was just like, no, let's go, let's go. So I was pulling her, and we just kept running and running until we exited the park, and that was the victory run. So I was like, yo, that was so magical. It was like a breakthrough. You know, I felt like a, a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I came in the park with so much fear, so much um, anger, and, and um, I was afraid of what might happen next in my life. And at that point, I, I felt so liberated and able and um, unstoppable. So I said, you know what, I got to share this with other people. So that was a Tuesday, and then I started the victory run that Sunday. That Sunday. All right, and in the very kind of similar format that we, we did today? Pretty much. All right. Yeah, except I added on the mountains and everything like that. Oh, so it's evolved a little bit. Oh, yeah, most certainly. But So it really kind of started out of this emotional place. Yes. And wanting to overcome some of these emotional challenges yes. and aspire to the greater with, characteristics you were looking to right, embody, with, right? Exactly, with uh -huh. vigorous physical motion. You also started a company called the refinement group yeah just um having to refine myself and seeing my um stages of refinement throughout my life people who've known me or who've seen me saw my growth you know from this really crude teenager to who i am today <laughs> all right i i, I got to agree yeah. um i think even that's what's happening even in, in the park yeah uh there was some of that refinement going on yeah. taking some of our crude shapes and helping us shape them a little bit more. That's right. And we all learn from each other too, you know. I'm sure everyone could take something from that aspect of, because we spoke about communication, interpersonal communication today. Everyone could take something from each person's challenging area of communication, you know. Like someone spoke about being patient. The other person spoke about having to follow up whenever someone reaches out to them. The other person spoke about being a better listener. You know. you know how it is on Facebook. You, you see someone that you met through a friend and through a friend and a friend like, of a hey. friend. And then <laughs> and now you're friends on Facebook. But then I just started to see these kind of uh, interesting feeds come up mm. in my news feed. Yeah. And you were really sharing a lot of motivational uh, imagery. Mm. And, and that's what caught my eye because it wasn't just the one-off. It was it was becoming consistent, mm. and I found it to be kind of uplifting. Really, what was it? I, I mean, it was a number of things. I just do it because it's what I'm doing, you know. 
Like I don't know what's consistent necessarily. I just know what I'm focusing on and I share it with other people to possibly inspire them. That's why I asked you what was it. No, and, 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 and see, it comes off very mm. authentic. Mm. So it was, for example, maybe a picture of, uh, it, it wasn't even the workouts at the time. It might have been a picture of your food. Mm. Um, it might have been one of your model pictures mm. or it, it might have been one of those pictures with just the words yeah. that said something like, you know, today is the day that you have. We don't know if we're promised tomorrow. Yeah, are, you, are you putting in the effort yeah. that you're going to be happy with if you don't make it to tomorrow? Yeah. If tonight's the night that things wrap up for you, did you feel that you did your, your thing today? In the work that I do, <laughs> I discuss the nature of love and relationships and matters of spirit that we're these kind of phenomenon that we're experiencing as we are in the 21st century uh-huh. and, um, and well, let me tell you so many people are interested in that topic this is the conversation and it is a it's a very very relevant and current conversation but I wanted to know as you're working with uh, your folks in the refinement group what are you finding their expectations, if, if any, um, w- what are you finding their expectations to be? So um, I can tell you all the different things that people talk about as far as professional experiences or at home uh, being a mom experiences or, um, you know, partnership experiences. But what it all boils down to me and the way I think is the experience with their self and how, you know, these challenges and roadblocks that they experience within themselves prevents them from actually being able to um, to maintain productive relationships um, or advantageous relationships with other people. Mm. Yeah. If I understand you correctly, they're looking to overcome some of their personal challenges to have a fuller relationship with themselves mm-hmm. first, yes. to then be able to have a fuller relationship with another. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. <laughs> you know, what, what's great oh, about wow. that, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what you would find. But as, as I've worked with people and I've coached people in, in, in terms of relationships and things like that, that's what I find the big thing to be, yeah. is that people don't necessarily know themselves well enough, mm-hmm. and they're getting involved with interactions that yeah. now it's, it's compounded. Whatever you had is compounded with what your partner is dealing with. It just becomes and a whole bunch of projection and, and expectation. Yes, complicated, and right? Yeah. Or, or they say it's complex. It's really complex. Mm-hmm. But um, that's what I found also. So yeah. you're actually being able to do the work that helps people get some of that clarity. That's right. That's what it's about. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Helping people to push through those challenges within themselves. I see that there's a big um, physical fitness component to what you do, and it's not just like physical fitness, health and health and wellness, but there's beauty, physical health and beauty, uh, image, that kind of thing. Um, and I and I know that um, we spoke just briefly earlier, and you kind of mentioned that mental health is important for you as well. Yeah. But um, all of this kind of wraps in together, and I'm wondering how much, how much of the body consciousness notion is wrapped up in the perceptions on spirituality and, and um, so spiritual experience. There was one time when you know uh, I thought it was all about you know taking care of the body or you know making the body beautiful, adorning the body. Then there was another time where I was like, you know what? No, it's about spirit. So it was all about building on spirit and, you know, um, uh, raising my consciousness and reading and meditating and doing all these things to work on my spirit, you know, ignoring the body, but not necessarily ignoring it because I still was eating healthy and things of that nature. But then, you know, the, the beauty aspect was missing, you know, because it was really basic. The way I dressed, the way I presented myself and things of that nature was just like, you know, forget all of that. That's... That, that's superficial um, and then came a time when <clears throat> started building more in my mind you know and by that time I realized that it's not only when I started building on my mind more I realized in thinking and using my mind in that way that it was about the mind body and the spirit that the person is a holistic being that you cannot ignore any aspect of yourself 
You have to be a complete individual because if you're not a complete individual, then you're going to look outside of yourself for things, people, places to complete that part of your person because no matter what, that part of your person will always be there whether you ignore it or not. Right, and that's right. why we'll continue to seek outside of ourselves for that fulfillment because it's always there. It's never going to leave you. So unless you deal with that part of yourself, then you're going to have to suffer with expecting it from other people. And that's a, suff a sufferation. A sufferation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, it's a type of suffering because that means you're depending on somebody else for your own happiness. Right. Yeah. Not, not very reliable. No. I'm, I'm also curious because with body consciousness comes physical attraction. Yeah sometimes objectification, yes, sexualization. Yes. For example, some are longing to be in better shape so yes. they can be a more attractive, what they see as more attractive. Others are in excellent physical condition and in those cases does the physical connection or the sexuality become overwhelming to finding the love connection. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of the things I'm wondering if you hear. That second one is complex. Um, so the first one is, is, is a bit obvious in that if you have a lower body image or, um, you know, you're not really feeling too confident in your, what your body represents to you, in the mirror, straight up, you know, if you're not confident about that, then what you project is the lack of security and the lack of confidence and also you don't feel worthy. That's a very important element. How you feel about your body is extremely important. That's, and also, you know, social media and magazines and, and um, just the media in general influences the way we see body image, you know. Um, so if we're seeing a woman with a size 20 waist and a 40 hips and ass and, excuse my language, and big old breasts, you know, then that's what everybody wants to aspire to, you know really extremely fit photoshopped out out of the world but they don't right, know that because right. that's just what they see blemish and free that's right. right and these women come to me with all these body images wanting to look like this and that's why i always promote you know don't try to be beautiful like them be be, be gorgeous like you you know so you know they come with these um perceptions of trying to be like someone else when they should actually be loving themselves i said the other day uh, that our flaws deserve love too. Mm. Our flaws deserve love too because, again, that's a part of ourselves. So if we continue to look down on our flaws, talk bad about our flaws, you know, call our flaws and criticize our flaws and call it these negative names, then that's bringing down a part of ourselves, regardless of what. Right. And how is that going to make you feel if right. that's how you're talking about yourself, regardless of, of whether it's a flaw or not? It's still you, and you're still talking about yourself in that way. So first we have to begin to talk about ourselves in a more positive light, whether we like that thing or not. In order to make something grow, you have to love it first, you know? So, um, yeah, it does affect human relations and, and the way we project ourselves to others and um, the way people treat us. Because whether we admit it or not, people sense how you feel about yourself. They sense it in your posture. They sense it in the way you speak. They sense it in the things you put on. They sense it in the way you treat yourself. That's why I say um, treat yourself how you'd like others to treat you. Okay. You know? Right. Um, and then that second uh, question is pretty complex. People who come with better body images, if they get caught up in um, pretty much, you're saying... Sexual relationships. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Loving yeah. relationships, less. Yeah, because a lot of times Success. people who, who pay more attention to their body and get their body to that pristine um, shape, a lot of times they get caught up on that third dimensional level and are unable to really tap on to the other things that matter, such as love and, you know, um, becoming a more conscious individual who is less selfish because when you get caught up on that aspect of yourself where you're building on your body, you feel good about yourself, your self-esteem is high, physically, appearance-wise, image-wise, it's you become more self-absorbed in a way, you know? So it's easier to pay mind to your own um, needs 
and not too much of that of someone else, you know. And it is easier to become uh, more caught up in sexual relationships because people find you more attractive. You know, people find you more attractive. It's easier to attract people. And it also gives you a level of consciousness that is more readable. More people read on a physical level. More people read on, you know, a sexual level. Not too many people read and attract on a mental or spiritual level. So that level is easy to attract people with, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you get spoiled. You know, I know, I know a lot of men like that. They get spoiled because women find them attractive, you know, and because they're reading on this basic third dimensional level, you know? <clears throat> so it is easy to get caught up. Unless you take a conscious, you make a conscious decision to say, you know what? I notice how I'm affecting other people in this way. I notice how this thing that I do affects me and makes me feel messed up. I don't think I'm a good person when I do that. Unless you take the time out to work on that aspect of yourself, then yeah, you will stay on that work on that plane. This takes us into one of the reasons that we're even here today because again, in the news feed came across something that you said you were having a conversation about naked yoga yeah and kaboom you know the whole conversation oh gets my gosh, just unfolds it. on yeah. on facebook and uh maybe you can recap a couple of the points that stood out to you um i remember there was there was a lot of good interaction both from the men and women, the women there was a lot of honesty with it there was a lot of honesty which was really good True. people being honest about where they were yeah uh whether, whether they could handle it or not, or, or what their perceptions were in, in handling it. That's right. But um, what were the biggest impressions that you took away from that whole conversation? A little annoyance because, I mean, not really, because for me, I find men very predictable. And, um, I'll deal with that later. And um, it was just predictable that men specifically were saying that they may not be able to deal with that because they're working on such a carnal level that you know they may become aroused from being amongst other women who may possibly be attractive doing yoga in these positions and things of that nature and I'm like you know what granted I'm not be I'm not beyond that yeah I'm gonna do the quick um, millisecond roundup and then I'm moving on my way from there. I'm not like, oh my gosh, what, what I could do with this and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going in like that because that's not my purpose for being there. And honestly, that's just not my general outlook in life right now anyway. You know, um, I, I see beauty, whether it's a man or a woman. I see beauty. I'm like, that's beautiful. That person's beautiful. I like this about them, that, that about them really quick. And then I keep it moving, you know. Um... So the fact that they they were saying that they were unable to overcome that point, you know, that they, they'd be caught up throughout the whole entire, entire yoga session. They couldn't see themselves overcoming that and actually finding a point to where they can focus on themselves was just predictable. Did you feel that that was very telling in regards to how we're conducting ourselves every day? No. Be what it, because... Mean? To me, I know this. That's how I. That's how things are. No, that, that's that's what I'm saying. It, for you, when you see men day to day, is that it is telling, but it's not telling because it's something that I. It's not that, new. Yeah, it's so old. It's, it's so old. Okay. It's so old. That's why. It's so old and boring. Yeah. Good point. And is is that the general that feeling is. from from most Can women? You tell? <laughs> Are you speaking for but all, for I'm many not, women on not, in that regard? I'm not speaking for all women in this respect because a lot of women don't mind that, you know. Um, and then next thing you know, they end up suffering and heartbroken. Because Separation. Separation again. <laughs> and heartbroken because women fail to realize we operate on a different level. We, we operate on a more emotional level. Whereas men, someone stated um, um, a quote yesterday, a tweet, that um, men... They said, they said the N-word. Men can um, go F a girl and still love their main woman. Women can't go F another man and still love their man. And that's true. As ignorant 
as that person phrased it, that was straight truth. Right. It's true. Right. Because women, we get emotionally caught up. We invest. Men, the only thing they invest is the physical part of themselves, if that's what they're doing. You More know? often. Yeah. Right. I mean, in, 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 in regards to dipping out of your relationship. Right, right. I mean, you know, it's, that's you know. an old notion. Women see sex as love, and yeah. men absolutely do not. Right. They see it is love an old as love notion, but for some reason people think it's a new, new notion because women think that we've evolved in 2014, that we are able to, to just, you know, bang, bang, and, and be okay with it, you know? Even, even, my, even my transgender, you know, woman to man friends that I have I still find them to still have the same emotional nature as us women do because it's just something innate we work on a higher vibration when it comes to emotions you know we're more connected we're naturally just more connected to our emotions and, and that's a feminine quality so it's quality. against our nature yeah in which both men and women have we both have right. feminine and, and masculine energies but you know obviously we're women we're going to be more in tune with the feminine energies right. and men right. are going to be more in tune with the masculine energy and that's why you know it, it, in this life I feel like it's about us finding and raising our, our vibrations to the level where we find that balance to bring them both together like yin and yang that way we can actually be able to function with the physical man and the physical woman in harmony totally totally oh. no that, you, you, you summed it up I, my, I, I am really glad we got a chance to talk today thanks for letting me come and sit down with you yes thank Thanks. you for having me thank no. you for coming to the victory run my and pleasure doing your thing. the victory run <laughs> the victory run you've got to do the victory run please um give us the date okay. the times so it's and every any, sunday every yeah. sunday at 9 a.m we meet at the grand army entrance of prospect park which is on the Flatbush Avenue Eastern Parkway entrance at 9 a.m. sharp. We don't wait, so be there a couple of minutes before. And we go into the park, we do psychological, physical fitness through the woods, up to the highest peak of Brooklyn, to the mountain, through the fields. We do high knees, we do 500 abs, we do push-ups, we do everything while working on our inner selves and char characteristics to build on ourselves so that we can be better people in general and be more successful. Where can they reach you? So I am The Refinement Group on Instagram, The Refinement Group on Facebook, um, Maat Petrova on Twitter, more uh, active on Instagram and Facebook, however. I'm Charles DeVoe. Thanks for watching the Paradox Review. Yeah. Uh, first episode, actually, as it turns out. Oh, nice. Thank you. Th well, thank <laughs> you. Uh, Love Rules segment. And, of course, you can check me out on loverules.us. Beautiful. Again, thank you. See you all later. Victory. <laughs>